looking back at my sort of school days, it was quite a checkered story. Um, because I went to school and I had crazy dreams of travelling out into space and doing sort of fantastic things inspired by the clangers and, and things like Star Trek. But when I got to school, because especially in, in primary school and when you first start in school, it's all about reading and writing, I just felt incredibly dumb. And it really felt as if all my amazing dreams were just coming to naught and were sort of just crashing to the ground. So I had an imagination. Um, but when I was trying to get that imagination onto paper, it was so frustrating because the ideas I had, the words I wanted to use, the words I'd use in the sort of verbal storytelling just wouldn't translate to the page. And so that was just, um, uh, it was a bit um, disappointing. But I did get encouragement, and um, there was a, a sort of a specific moment uh, when there was a turnaround for me, uh, when a teacher asked a question in a science lesson, and I got it right, uh, and when no one else put their hands up, and it was a complete turnaround for me, because I thought, hold it, maybe I'm not as dumb as I think, and maybe I'm not as dumb as they think. And so from then, things took off a little better, and um, I realised that science got people out into space, so if I could do one in science, maybe my dream could come true. I remember my father saying to me, uh, Maggie, you know, you've got challenges and it might take you longer but you will get there and for some reason I believed him and so um, uh, yeah, it was um, a matter of sort of a doggy determination in some cases. <laughs> if you're an academic scientist your life depends on writing papers and I realised that if my life was going to depend on my written word I don't think I would excel as a scientist. So I realised that I was more uh, hands-on, and so I went into science and engineering. So my uh, first degree was in physics, and my second degree was in mechanical engineering, and my PhD was very hands-on. And so um, I decided that I'd also go and work in industry rather than academia, and I love communication. In fact, I've steered my career into communication, science communication. And I just thought that was me, but I think that's dyslexia. And in some ways it's frightening, you know, what's me and what's the dyslexia? Um, but it's also powerful and motivating as well. And through my career, I have seemed to think differently from the others in my group. And sometimes that can be so helpful because everybody's sort of, sort of taking one route and you say, well, hold it. Have we considered this way? Or maybe we can sort of go this way. So, and, and I think that comes from the dyslexia. When I look at sort of the curriculum today and actually sort of look at what they're teaching kids, it worries me because we're not teaching kids to think, we're teaching kids to pass exams. And um, when I was working as a space scientist, and sometimes I'd get someone coming in to interview and I'd give them a hypothetical situation and they'd look at me and say, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't do that, um, we weren't taught that. I say, no, but I want you to use your creativity, your imagination and see how we can actually perhaps apply this, apply your knowledge to a different situation. These are things that dyslexics thrive in, and we're moving away from them. And that's bad for dyslexics, but it's bad for everyone. We need the creatives, we need the imagination, we need people telling stories. So I think we need to put, put that back into the curriculum. And so it's not all about uh, ticks in the box, but about the bigger picture. I wish teachers were aware of the, the yin and the yang with dyslexia because there are some challenges, the written word, spelling, things like that are, are difficult or more difficult for dyslexics. But the imagination, the storytelling, the communication, the empathy, all these positives are sometimes sort of neglected in, within the school system. As a child, I was undiagnosed and I was at the back of the class and I just thought I was dumb and I thought school was, wasn't for me and I was disillusioned. But if you know what's causing the challenges you're experiencing, then I think school takes on a whole new dimension. And today there's so many different things that support dyslexics. And so if you can tap into those and utilise those, then you can excel no matter where you are.